after the in-depth discussion of the TLS handshake that closed the previous chapter covering the essentials of TLS, we have reached the fourth chapter of this course, which is a chapter that covers various miscellaneous TLS topics. The 10 TLS-related topics I compiled for this chapter are topics I observed to be of interest and importance in the application of TLS within various contexts. We will now, within this lesson, start with having a look at the efficiency of the TLS 1.2 and TLS 1.3 handshakes, which, as we know from the previous lessons, are the crucial and also quite involved sub-protocols of TLS that construct a secure channel from an insecure channel between peers that have potentially never met before. Once we understand the efficiency of the TLS handshakes, we will have a look at the caveats of using TLS session resumptions and the caveats of using TLS pre-shared keys. Each of these two features serves a purpose, but as we will get to see shortly, at a cost in terms of security guarantees of the overall TLS session. Next one up will be a short discussion of the backwards compatibility and version negotiation of TLS, which are important aspects to be aware of if interoperability of a system needs to be given with its surrounding context. Then we will have a look at the differences in terms of cipher suites offered by both TLS 1.2 and TLS 1.3. As we will see, TLS 1.2 has a very large set of supported cipher suites, which on one hand gives TLS 1.2 a high degree of flexibility, but on the other hand also leads to a large attack surface. This realization of the potentially large attack surface of TLS 1.2 then leads us into a mini series of lessons on various attacks on TLS, where we will have a look at logjam, Locky 13, Sweet 32, Crime, and Heartbleed. Even though these attacks are interesting subjects to be studied in and by themselves, the major takeaway from these attacks is a set of recommendations on TLS cipher suites, which will be presented for both TLS 1.2 as well as TLS 1.3. Next topic we will then look at is the topic of whether the application data encapsulated within TLS is protected with non-repudiation or only authenticity. This is then followed by a lesson on the key differences between the role of a TLS client and the role of a TLS server, once on the level of the TLS protocol itself, but once also on the level of the X509 certificate used by both the client and the server within a TLS session. Then an interesting lesson follows on the topic of whether TLS necessarily needs to be used together with certificates or whether there is a way to use TLS without certificates and what the security implications of such a TLS use without certificates would be. Last in this chapter on miscellaneous TLS topics is then a lesson that investigates the differences between TLS master secrets TLS pre-shared keys and the TLS encryption keys used to protect the encapsulated application data and with the lesson then presenting how the links between these secrets and keys are given by the pseudorandom function PRF and the HMAC based key derivation function HKDF. This sounds like a lot of interesting topics to discuss so let's get started. First topic up to discuss is the efficiency of the TLS 1.2 handshakes and the TLS 1.3 handshakes. Starting the discussion on the efficiency on the TLS 1.2 handshake, it's best to briefly remind us that the TLS 1.2 handshake starts with a stage where the client and the server agree on a TLS version and a TLS cipher suite. This is then followed by a stage where the server is authenticated, which is followed by a stage 
where the client and the server agree on a master secret, which is then followed by an optional stage where the client is authenticated, and with the last stage then being the finish stage, where the client and the server finish off the handshake. What we can see here in this drawing is the handshake as it takes place between a client and a server that have never met before and as such can't conduct a session resumption. If we then simply have a look at how many round trips of messages there are in such a handshake that doesn't make use of session resumptions, then we can see that the first round trip of messages is the round trip that starts with the client hello message at the top, sent from the client to the server, and lasts all the way down to the server key exchange message sent from the server back to the client. This first round trip is then followed by a second round trip that starts with the client key exchange message sent from the client to the server and which lasts all the way down to the final message of the handshake, which is the finished message sent from the server back to the client. So very clearly, a full TLS 1.2 handshake for a new TLS session, not resuming any previous sessions, consists of two round trips. Efficiency of a TLS handshake is then measured in terms of how many round trips are required before within a TLS connection the first application data can be securely exchanged. For a TLS 1.2 handshake, not resuming any previous sessions, the efficiency is then two round trips as only after the full handshake completed the first application data can be exchanged confidentially. If a client and a server have met before, they are enabled to resume a previous session. In this case, in order to resume a previous session, the client would send the ID of a previous session with its client hello message. And if the server can trace this ID back to a previous session, the server will let the client know about this and the previous session will be resumed by reusing the master secret of that previous session. The handshake then terminates early after only one round trip and as such the efficiency of a TLS 1.2 handshake in case sessions are resumed is one round trip as in case of session resumptions only one round trip is required before application data can be exchanged confidentially. Clearly, resuming a session allows to increase the efficiency of the handshake from two round trips to one round trip However, there are caveats associated with TLS 1.2 session resumptions and these caveats will be discussed in the next lesson. Going into the discussion of the TLS 1.3 handshake efficiency, let us also briefly remind here that the TLS 1.3 handshake starts with the two stages for the client and the server to agree on a TLS version and a cipher suite and for the client and the server to agree on a master secret. This is then followed by the two stages where the server is authenticated and the client is optionally authenticated and where both the server and the client then finish off the handshake. Knowing from the discussion of the TLS 1.2 handshake efficiency just before that the efficiency of a TLS handshake is measured in terms of how many round trips are required before the client can send application data confidentially, we can then look at this TLS 1.3 handshake where we see that after just one round trip, the client received all the server handshake messages. With having received all server handshake messages after just one round trip, the client is then all set up to start sending encrypted application data, which then makes clear that TLS 1.3 out of the box and not using any pre-shared keys only requires one round trip before first application data can be exchanged confidentially. Now, in the case where the client and the server would make use of a pre-shared key, the client would send a label of a pre-shared key to use with its second message to the server. From this pre-shared key, the client and server can then derive an early secret with the HMAC-based key derivation function HKDF, and this early secret can immediately be used by the client to encrypt early application data sent to the server. 
As such, we can then see that in case the client and the server use pre-shared keys, the efficiency of a TLS 1.3 handshake is actually zero round trips, as the client can essentially immediately start to send encrypted duplication data in case pre-shared keys are used. Later application data is then encrypted with keys that are additionally also derived from the half keys exchanged between the client and the server. Clearly, the use of pre-shared keys allows to increase the efficiency of a TLS 1.3 handshake from one round trip to zero round trips. However, the use of pre-shared keys has caveats associated with it, and these caveats will be discussed in the next lesson.